training and adequate resources to help local law enforcement accurately report and document hate crimes committed in the city. According to the FBI's most recent annual hate crime report, there were 5,928 hate crimes committed in 2013, including four here in the state of Mississippi. Joining us to talk more about this is the president of the Jackson City Council, Councilman DeKeith Stamps, who sponsored the ordinance, and attorney Jody Owens, who is the managing attorney with the Southern Poverty Law Center here in Mississippi. Good morning to you both. Good morning. Good morning. Let's talk a little bit about, first and foremost, Councilman Stamps, why this was important to you? Well, when we came aboard, we realized that we know a lot about serial killers. We know a lot about drug dealers. It's been researched and it's been trolled through for a long time. But why do we know in detail to the same degree about hate crimes? It's because of the lack of reporting. And that's when we went to work on working with different organizations about producing something that will uh, spur more reporting so we can have more data, so we can be proactive versus reactive. Jody, your organization is always on the forefront, taking stands for various causes, and you, uh, you guys support this legislation 100%. Why? Well, we realized that hate crimes were not being reported, and since the death of James Craig Anderson in 2011, we need deterrence. We need people in Mississippi to know that there's serious consequences for actions like this. And we realized that the city of Jackson could be a catalyst for the rest of the state to start this, because nowhere in the state of Mississippi are hate crimes being kept in the municipal level or the state level. You know, four in 2013 mm -hmm. here in the state of Mississippi, and probably one of the most notable ones was that of James Craig Anderson. Yesterday was historic of sorts. It was. It was actually his birthday. Um, and uh, it would have been great if his family could come down, but they're going to come down in a couple of weeks. But more important than that, um, it took almost 30 years to get someone convicted in Megar Evers' case. Uh, we have Emmett Till case. We have several other cases. And we have so many undocumented and unreported. Right. And that's the key fact. There's so many people that don't report them. And so this legislation just uh, pushes forward and moves the needle of actually doing something, not just vigils and marches, but actually proactively, aggressively moving forward. Let's unwrap what this uh, ordinance, this legislation would require. What it's going to do is once um, a higher level of government declares that this is a hate crime, because Jackson just arrest people. We don't declare it a hate crime. But once it is, now we pull that information back down and we keep it in data sets in the, in the city of Jackson so we can start researching and going through that data. And Jody, your group is almost like a watchdog of sorts. You hold people accountable, particularly uh, when it comes to fair treatment uh, of people uh, around the state. What do you see your group's role in terms of when a hate crime is reported uh, in the city of Jackson or across the state of Mississippi? We well, primarily want to educate the state and know that this is not just isolated events. We routinely monitor hate websites. Uh, Mr. Wolf and the massacre in South Carolina is a perfect example. His manifesto showed that he was encouraged by the Citizens Council of Sovereignty. We know where he got his hate from. And we need people to know that these organizations are actively teaching people to hate and kill and target minorities, people of color, for race, creed, sexual orientation, and the things that we need to proactively be doing to stop them as a community. All right, very good. Councilman Stams, uh, this ordinance I, I know requires additional training. What else does it do? Well, the reporting, and that's the key because hate, people who perpetuate hate say two things. First, I'm superior to you, and two, I'm going to determine your life. And those people, we need to know, those, know more about those people and those individuals, the people they run with, the organizations they go through. I can take a drug dealer right now in the city of Jackson, put him into our database, and we can map out his associations and all that. Well, why can't I do that with hate criminals? Because the data is not there. So this will start the collection of that data. And the more cities that come aboard, now we can link data from city to city, and now we can grow a, a bigger database of information. And in collecting this data, what is required of the responding officers? Well, once, once it's determined a hate crime by a higher level of government, okay. now you pull that data back down and you, and you specifically tag it as hate crimes. And so now as you database this and you get more cities to come aboard, now we can form a network of statewide information resourcing for investigators to troll through. Because hate crime groups are in certain places and we can target on maps where they will be, where the sponsorship, what counties they're in, what cities they're in, and we can better police their activity and protect the citizens of the state in Jackson. There are those that would argue, though, that this is symbolic at best. What would you say to that? Well, you know, I, I would always think that you have to start somewhere. And when you're a state like Mississippi, as the councilman says, with 
assassinations of Megar Everest and Emmett Till, we have a long way to get to where we need right. to be. And it starts a process of educating people. We don't want to stop here. The councilman says we need more action on these issues. We have to engage the community and have the data necessary to respond. Right. And one thing I will say to the symbolic nature, um, um, this is not a walk or a march or, or, or a healing visual or a resolution. This is not that you're discounting or discrediting that, not but discrediting it's far different. It, but it's far different right. for, the, for, the, uh, for the people who say this is symbolic. This is a um, direct action so that we can police better and we can uh, be proactive versus reactive. Are either one of you surprised that it's 2015 and we're still having to deal with issues like this? You know, um, the South just needs to stop fighting the Civil War. We need to start fighting the global war and stop fighting each other. And we can rise above this hate, this racism, and start healing our cities and healing our states and moving towards a global economic. We need to be fighting uh, for America but against China, not fighting Mississippi black and white. We can, we, it's time for us to rise above these lower-level divisions and start um, going to the global economics, or we'll forever be at the bottom. And I'm not surprised because we've never dealt with so many of the issues. Right. As the president said in this eulogy of, of Reverend Pickett, you know, it's not just a flag. It's just the mentality. It's economics. It's all the things the systems are in place that historically have been used to hold people of color down. Let me ask uh, this question. So um, in addition to uh, getting this done on James Craig Anderson's uh, birthday, I know that the city is going to uh, recognize him at the uh, next council meeting. Was his case the driving factor for this? No, we introduced this because of the issue, the issue of, of hate crimes. And we introduced this before the, the South Carolina incident. It's just right the day after we introduced this, this tragedy happened. Um, but I was, I'm appreciative of my council colleagues and the mayor's administration for supporting this endeavor and looking forward to producing better results and protecting people. Because at the end of the day, it's about protecting people. It's about uh, being tough on crime and, and protecting people's lives. And this measure passed unanimously, right? Yes, sir. And so, so now then, when the higher-ups, the federal authorities, mm -hmm. label an issue as a hate, hate crime, crime. Mm -hmm. this data comes to the city, and what happens then? Now we start to document this data. So over time, we will collect more and more data so we will be able to investigate these. So now when a new instance comes up, now we can link it to old instances that have happened in the past. Jody, do you anticipate other cities coming on board with this? Yeah, we, we certainly hope so. There's been conversations throughout the state about uh, wanting to follow Jackson's lead, and we appreciate Councilman Stamps and his leadership on the issue. And we also, uh, last week, the Mississippi Black Caucus, the local elected officials, um, put this out to the entire network. They adopted it as a measure that all cities, will, they're encouraging all cities to support and move in their cities. All right, very good. Gentlemen, thank you both for being with us this morning. Thank you. Certainly appreciate it. Good stuff. We'll take a quick break. When we return, more action centered on removing the state flag. Details straight ahead. Thank you.